Uh, hello, uh, I'm Jack Rupp again, and I'm the Assistant Chief of Plain Township Fire Department. And the point of the videos today is to give you a demonstration of the skills that we want you to perform over the next couple days as you meet with us on an individual basis and that uh, to be able to practice uh, the critical um, care of uh, extreme hemorrhage control. Uh, so this is going to be different from what you normally see. We showed you a little bit in the video that, or in the uh, PowerPoints that showed uh, what severe hemorrhage might look like. And so this point is to end up and give you the points that you need to be able to control that severe hemorrhage. The hemorrhage kits that we've developed with the schools contain uh, a pair of gloves, large uh, vinyl gloves, so if you have a latex allergy that uh, this will not affect you. A uh, improvised tourniquet, and as we talked about before, the made-up tourniquets are rather expensive, so the improvised tourniquets allowed us to be able to develop a large number of tourniquets and put them in place in the school. You have a, um, a stiff item that you use to tighten it down with, and then a triangular bandage, and the ring ends up and slides up and secures that, and we'll show you how to do that. We also have gauze and a compress that we'll use when we end up and talk about either tacking a wound or that and direct pressure. The first thing that I want to do is show you the placement of the improvised tourniquet. You'll take the improvised tourniquet out, you'll find the center part of it, and as we talked about before, is you want to go as high as possible on the limb. And uh, you'll remember we talked about the fact that the vein spasms and sometimes the veins will pull up higher. And so if you put it immediately at the wound, you might miss the vein. So we're going to end up and take the top part of it. We're going to put it down over the top of the arm. We're going to bring it back around like this and hold it like that. Take the ring and we bring it out. We slide it down over the side like that. We pull it up tight and we put one overhand knot in it. We pull it as tight as possible. And the tighter you pull it at that point, you know, you may get some of the bleeding control there as well. Another hand knot over the dowel rod. Get it as tight as you possibly can. And then we're just going to use this to tighten it. And we're going to take it as tight as we can. Now on this, this mannequin in that, it doesn't move or it's not, the, it's, it's fairly rigid. So it's not like an arm that would end up and you'd be able to take several turns in it. Get as many turns in it as you can, as tight as possible, so that the bleeding stops, and you slide the ring up and over the, uh, the dowel side. Oops. And that locks it. It's a lot easier than trying to tie this in place. That's the way that it works. I'll show you again on this one. So we're going to take these. We're going to end up and open up the package. Take the tourniquet out, unfold it. You're going to drop it over the top of the arm. You're going to wrap it around from behind. I'm going to put the ring over the top of the band, the triangular bandage, like this. You're going to tie one half hitch, one half knot. Put the dowel rod in there. Tie it again. and then you're going to end up and turn it until it's tight. And then you work the ring up and over the dowel rod so that it's tight. And that's how we end up and do the improvised tourniquets. All right, what we're demonstrating is arterial bleeding here, and you can see the pulsation to it and you immediately want to go to direct pressure. And if it's a large vein, something really uh, severe in that, it's going to continue to do it, and it's going to take more than direct pressure to be able to end up and control that. This is going to be on the trunk of the body where you're not going to be able to end up and use a tourniquet. So you're going to have to take uh, your roller gauze, and we're going to put it in there, and we're going to fill that cavity. And as we fill that cavity, it will end up and soak up the blood, put pressure on the artery, and you can see it's, he's still pumping it, but it's beginning to control it, and then we're going to end up and put direct pressure on it. And we're going to end up and leave 
direct pressure on it and continue to hold that and then once we end up and get to the point to where that it begins to clot because it should start clotting on its own then we're going to end up and uh, be able to see how we're doing and it will control it. You can actually see that it's still bleeding a little bit there so you go back and hold additional pressure and that's how you're going to end up and take care of filling the cavity of, of a, a knife wound or a stabbing wound is what this represents. This particular training device uh, represents a, a large uh, gunshot wound and you'll see that it's got a large cavity and again you're going to end up and start with direct pressure on it and you want as much direct pressure as possible but because of the size of the cavity and the way that it was flowing we knew that it was arterial in nature so you're going to end up and roll that out so we can end up and get started and we're going to end up and fill it and you can see that in that case you know you're going to continue to put the roller gauze like we did before in there and if it fills a cavity then you can end up and stop and this is just about full I can tell because I can get less and less in each time and so when you're like that you go ahead and stop and again put direct pressure on it and this lets people know that there is a cavity that's being filled with the roller gauze keep the direct pressure and see if it stops bleeding and you can see that we ended up and was able to control the bleeding with that. And if it continues to bleed again a little bit more then we're going to end up and add some more and we'll continue to hold direct pressure. Again this is not necessarily for a limb this is for somewhere on a large body surface where you cannot use a tourniquet.